want to come and I want to talk today about two things, one about love and the other about timing. Love. Everything that, that we're positioned in the love of God. Like you're just positioned in the love of God. And when we talk about loving people, you know, um, allowing the love of God that's poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Like, oh my gosh, isn't this amazing? It just bypasses the soul and it just gets poured into our heart. The Holy Spirit continually cascading the love of God into our hearts to flow into other people. Love is not wishy-washy. Love is not an emotion. Love is not a feel-good. Love is a decision. It is a decision that what you want is the highest and the best for the person you're with. If I relied upon my emotions, some days I'd love you and some days I'd love me. You know, if I was relied upon emotion, it would depend on whether I'd had pizza for dinner and was feeling, I wish I hadn't had that, or whether I'd had a good meal. Like emotions go up and down depending on, on all sorts of things. So if we depend upon emotions for love, it's not the truth. Up and down, in and out. But, it, but love is a decision that comes from your spirit where you decree God's highest and best for that person, that situation, the fullness of his redemption, his restoration, but you just want God's highest and best for the person, the situation. It bypasses the mind. The love of God, agape, love, bypasses the mind. It bypasses the soul even. The soul can be affected by it, but it flows out of your spirit. And above everything else, you are spirit beings. You are first a spirit who has a soul housed in a body, spiritually. So it's recognizing that the way we've been um, taught about love and often um, the way we've been loved by parents it's been with expectations. Well, if you do this, then I'll love you. If you do that, then I you know, don't think, whatever it might be. Um, expectations can be placed on people. That's not love. Love is, I, regardless, I love you and I want the best for you. Agape love. This is what we're talking about. It's not a wishy-washy thing. It's not an emotional thing. My emotions might be touched by it, but first and foremost, it flows from the spirit. It flows out of your being, out of your inner being. It's one of the rivers that flow out of you, that inner being of who you are. The love of God is cascading into your heart every single minute, into your spirit man, to, and just being filled up to flow out. So it's a, it's a decision that we make that I am going to walk in agape love, and that is believing and desiring the best for every person, every situation, every, every situation I'm in. And love never fails because it's a spiritual force. It's not an emotional thing. Gosh, if it was emotional, I mean, we can see what emotional love does with 50% of marriages ending up in divorce. We can see what emotional love does, but this is spiritual. It's a spiritual force. It comes from the heart of God. It's poured into our hearts because we've been born again, made this new creation in Christ. Therefore, I have the heart of God. I've got the mind of Christ. I'm one in Christ. Christ is in me. We flow together. It's a cosmic dance. The Holy Spirit, Father, Son, we're all together. We're all one. But the love of God that flows is not emotional, it's not up and down, it doesn't depend on whether you've been good or bad or naughty or nice. It just simply depends upon that God loves you with an unfailing love, that his, faithful, his love is faithful. And, you know, sometimes we think, well, I haven't prayed enough and I haven't done this enough. That, does ne that never affects the love that God has for us. Yeah, right. Right? That's right? So when we talk about love... And I want that to be one part of the culture of open heaven. It is basically a spiritual force that is desiring the highest and the best that God has for that person, the situation, the circumstance, whatever it is. That's what love is. Please forget Mills and Boone. Please forget TV. Please forget the way we've been brought up because that's all old creation. It's a brand new thing. It's just... And love never fails. Like the power of the spirit of love never fails. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It never fails. But it's not from your emotion. It's from your, your spirit man. 
your inner being. It flows with agape. Because you are alive now in Zoe life. You're alive with the Zoe life of God, with an eternal life. Like, you know, my body might decide to pack it in after a few years, but I am eternally alive. I can never die. Eternally alive. Eternally alive. My goodness, we get our heads wrapped around that. It's just amazing. We are eternally alive. And it's the power of his love, his agape, flowing out of his Zoe life. So when you got born again, the life of God himself impacted you, filled you, made you a brand new creation. So you live the life of God and you carry the agape love of God, which is simply desiring the highest and the best. What is the best thing in this situation? What is the will of God for you? Because the will of God is always the best. So when we talk about love, don't think emotional. Think faithful, wanting only the best, coming from the throne room of God, flowing into your heart to flow out of you and to touch the lives of others. And I want you to realise that I want to, I want to do a bit of give and take today, so I want to tell a couple of stories and then I want to ask some questions because I want us to interact and then we're going to have another altar call and we're going to pray for people. I want you to understand that, that there is a certain way of connecting with the timing of God. One of those is when you walk in love. When you're walking in that, you know, I love God. The commandment, basically, loving God, loving people as we love ourselves. That's the commandment. You know, as I love God with all of my heart and soul and mind and being and, and I love people as I love myself, as I start to walk in that love, then there comes a place where God can actually order my footsteps yes. because I'm flowing at, as one with him. But it's the timing that's important. It's timing that is really important. So if you want to turn, first of all, to Genesis chapter 39. And this is Joseph, just after he'd been sold into slavery. And I've got the Amplified. Joseph 39, verses 1. Genesis. Sorry, Joseph, yeah. Genesis. Genesis 39, sorry. Verses 1 to 6. Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain and chief executioner of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who'd brought him down there. Timing. He was brought down at a specific time so that a certain person bought him. If anybody else had bought him, his destiny would have been affected. But it was a certain time. Verse 2, but the Lord was with Joseph... And though a slave, he was a successful and prosperous man. Figure that out. How can you be successful and prosperous when you're a slave? Mm -hmm. Of course, of who was with him. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. So at your work, can people see that the Lord is with you? Can they see what, that, that the hand of the Lord is upon you for what you're doing? That the Lord causes everything you do to prosper and to be successful? His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to flourish and succeed in his hand. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favour in his sight and he served him. And Potiphar made him supervisor over his house and put all that he had in his charge. Verse 5, from that time, from the time that Potiphar gave him authority over the household from that time that he made him supervisor in his house and over all that he had the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake and the Lord's blessing was on all that he had in the house and in the field and Potiphar left everything that he had in Joseph's charge and paid no attention to anything except the food that he ate so at that time at that time when two destinies converge, at that time when Potiphar saw that it was because of the presence of the Lord on Joseph's life that everything was prosperous and he thought, man, I want to align with this. I want this in my life. And so he promoted Joseph and gave him charge of everything. And from that point of alignment, of stepping into alignment with Joseph, the master stepping into alignment with the slave, everything that Potiphar had flourished. Yeah. 
everything professionally, everything personally, it flourished. So when we go to work or when we connect with people, we've got to step into it from the place of Joseph that the presence of the Lord is with me, that the Lord makes every single thing that I do to prosper. God is with me, right? God is with me. Isn't it amazing that Almighty God has made himself available to us 24-7? Every minute of every day, God has said, I'm available. Come to the throne room. Ask me whatever you want. I'm with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So because of the presence of the Lord, not because of Joseph's prayer, not because of Joseph's studying of Torah, because he couldn't where he was. It was simply out of relationship. But because of the presence of the Lord, the Lord caused everything he did to prosper. Now, Joseph had a relationship. But from the time, from the time, that Potiphar appointed him, everything flourished for Potiphar from that time. So when we go to work, when we connect with people, from the time that we align with them, we should be expecting to see the release of the blessing of the Lord upon their lives. Potiphar was not godly. He was, a, a, you know, serving other gods, but because he had aligned Do you realize the favor of God on your life is so great that he will release his blessing upon ungodly employers simply because you're working for them? Do you know the power that your presence carries when you walk with the Lord? That's amazing, isn't it? But it's all about timing. From that time. So, you know, the Hebrews have 10 words for time. We have chronos and kairos, I think mainly in the Greek, but in the Hebrew, there are 10 words for time. And time can be seen as seeds in the hand of God. In other places, time is spelt with the name of God and the, the letter that represents the word of God. So the name and the word of God work together to bring about a change in time yeah. that releases destiny. So there's, all, there's another time, another, I forget how you spell it, <laughs> or pronounce it, but it's the time of second chances. So there's all these, these 10 different aspects of timing in the, in the Hebraic language that result in different opportunities being released to us. You know, there's a timing of a second chance. Peter, the disciple, got a second chance. So, is, so we've got to ensure, and by that I'm simply saying, just by faith, not by works, that we are in tune or in alignment with the timing of God for our lives. So I don't know about you, but I know when I'm not in alignment with the timing of God. Yeah. I know when I'm, I'm rushing around trying to get things done and I'm frantic, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed. That's not the timing of God. I mean, the timing of God, there's a rest. Yeah. So we kind of can pick up, even if we don't know what it is, but there's something that's a bit scratchy on the inside. Something's not quite right. We know that we're not in the timing of God. So, you know, when I notice that scratchy feeling on the inside, I'm feeling stressed, overwhelmed. I can't get it all finished. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, my gosh, I don't know where I'm going to fit this Zoom call in. I don't know. You know, like I'm booked up over a month in advance, like, oh, my goodness. So when I'm starting to feel like that, I've got to say, whoa, wait a second. I am caught up in the world's time and not my God's time because he's never stressed he's never rushed he's always he's always at rest so I need to step back and say okay I am out of alignment with your timing and I need to be brought back into your time back into the pace of grace back into the rhythm of heaven and walk that in my life so, but from the time that Potiphar aligned with Joseph, and Joseph was a slave, he had nothing to offer. He did not have any wealth. He didn't have any um, mighty connections. He didn't have any assets. He had nothing. He was a slave. He'd been bought at the slave market. He had nothing except the presence of God. It's all he needed was the presence of God. 